Hello and welcome to this ICME Global Awards webinar. My name is Matt Stalker and I'm your host for today's presentation. The ICME Global Awards celebrate chemical, process and biochemical engineering excellence and are widely recognised as the world's most prestigious chemical engineering awards. Today we'll be announcing the winner of the new ICME 2020 Process Automation and Digitalization Award sponsored by Aviva. This award recognises the best project, process or product to demonstrate excellence in the application of process automation and or digitalization within the chemical and process industries. Next up, representing the joint entry from CPFD Software and Thermochem Recovery International, it's Peter Blazer. All right, well, well thank you so much, Matt, and uh, looking forward to uh, this opportunity to present to you all. My name is Peter Blazer. I'm with uh, CPFD. This is a joint entry with TRI. And so on the line with me is Dr. Ravi Chandran from TRI. I'm gonna go through the overview presentation and Ravi's gonna join for, for any of the questions. So let's go ahead and get started. So at TRI, they create enabling technology for green renewable fuels and chemicals. It's all part of enabling decarbonization. And at the heart of the process, two, two key distinctives are feedstock flexibility, I'll get into that as we go, extreme flexibility into the types of feed feedstocks that the process can handle, and high carbon conversion, high efficiency. And, and really all this comes together for sustainable economics with a minimal overall environmental impact. And, and can I just say at the beginning that, that this works? Uh, this is not just a concept and bringing a, a, a work in progress. Uh, here's some images of initial uh, fuels and products produced. We see here jet fuel, diesel, other products. And these came out of the, the process demonstration unit uh, made entirely from either woody residuals or MSW, municipal solid waste. So at the heart of the process, uh, they have a two-stage gasification system. And the first stage is uh, on the left here, a steam reformer. On the right is a carbon trim cell. Uh, one of the, the real distinguishing features here, they're both deep bed uh, gasification type units, uh, deep fluidized beds, but the, the high efficiency comes about uh, in part through the indirect heating using pulse uh, combustion heaters. So tail gas later in the process comes in and, and is providing the heat for the process. And uh, here's sort of an example of how this would come together at their integrated biorefinery process demonstration unit in North Carolina. Uh, this in, included all aspects of a, a full biorefinery, including the feed system, the two fluidized beds, the steam reformer and the carbon trill cell, all the way down to a, a Fisher Trope synthesis unit. Uh, on the downstream end, and, that, and that's where the, the samples I showed were produced. So how do you get there, and how do you take a new idea and scale it to commercial use? At the heart of this process is a model, a syngas model, where we take the, the unit uh, operating conditions, uh, everything from you know, the process conditions and the, the geometry, the scale, then the feedstock properties coming in, uh, running municipal solid waste uh, could be very different than running uh, wood chips, for example. Put that into the model, and the idea is to be able to predict things like syngas composition, flow rates, conversion, efficiency, uh, and, and all these other pro uh, things that are important when you're, when you're engineering the process. And as we dug in, we realized there's really a lot of things needed as part of this model. There are, are, are Submodels related to uh, hydrodynamics, for example. These are fluidized gas particle systems. So you have the gas particle hydrodynamics, the fluidization, the bubbling, the solids distribution, not just the size distribution, but different materials, different compositions, and all the physical and material properties. And at the same time, there's the evolution of it, right? We have the drying, decomposition, devolatilization, the chemical kinetics whether that's on the solid phase or gas phase, transport phenomena. And so uh, we asked the question of how do we create this model? And, and this is what this entry is obviously about. Um, there's the traditional engineering approach, which was absolutely used. 
uh, systemic scale up. So this comes from a cold flow where you might find the minimum fluidization, bubbling, bed expansion, entrainment, mixing, all these traditional fluidization parameters. And then you'll have the reacting, the hot reacting units uh, and from various scales, starting at a, a feedstock test reformer at uh, two and a half uh, kilograms per hour, um, moving up to process demonstration units. So four dry tons per day to commercial, that could be 500 to several thousand tons per day. But it wasn't just that process, it was augmented through digitalization. Let me get into that here. That's where we come in. Here at CPFD Software, we have a unique expertise, specialty expertise in fluid particle systems and, and in particular simulations of those systems. Our product, Barracuda Virtual Reactor, models the 3D transient hydrodynamics, the thermal, the heat balance, and the chemical reactions within fluidized systems, be that gas phase or particle level reactions. And it's typically used uh, to assess performance through simulation, you know, determining the root cause of phenomena, not just what's happening, but why. Reducing risk of changes through virtual testing, be able to explore a broad range uh, of the parameter space on the computer. And invariably, over my years, what I've seen is a side effect is additional optimization opportunities always come about, they always do. And the end here is a rapid and informed scale up of confidence. But I want to digress for a minute and talk about uh, one of those buzzwords, uh, dis digital transformation. So in this schematic image, I have you know, the various stages. So you have a concept, you have various tests, various scale up and commercial. And digital transformation is not just using simulation or digitalization technology in an existing process. It's part of it, but it's not sufficient. So it's not just modeling the end commercial unit. In fact, it's not just modeling different stages along the way, although that's certainly part of it. Digital transformation is when not just the tech digital technologies used as part of the process, but the process itself is enabled to change through the use of the digital technology. So the way this worked is that it wasn't a one-way flow of information. Often we'd go at the pilot and commercial scale, find something that we didn't understand, go back and reform, refine that syngas model, uh, maybe even creating new experiments as we went. So the whole model is being used, the same model is being used at scales of uh, kilograms to tons, at scales that would fit in my hand to not fit in my house. Uh, to put it another way, here we have the uh, sort of the overall flow uh, of information. So starting at the, the cold flow, the characterization type tests, moving on to uh, the, the feedstock test reformer and process demonstration units commercial. As you go up in scale or down on the slide, uh, the, the complexity is increasing and, and, and so does the risk. And in, in traditional engineering, um, typically it's a one-way flow of information, not exclusively. So here's an example on the right where we have at the, the FTR, the feedstock test reformer uh, level, we have some test data. Uh, the two different process conditions, I won't go into the details, are shown here. And what we see is that test condition two does much better than test condition one in terms of the, the, the molar flow of the CO and hydrogen. Um, it's a log scale because we have different units on there, but you know, looking at not only, let's call it a 30% increase. The simulation, the model, the integrated model, shows the same uh, data and as the data and the same uh, scale up and then moving that on to the the process and then the commercial this is the traditional flow the distinction here is that the model is fully integrated and validated at each step of the process and, and that can move up or down um, let me show you this i've been using a lot of uh, hand waving and words here's just a few results coming out of the Barracuda virtual reactor. This is at the process demonstration unit level. What you're seeing there is different views into the exact same model. Uh, there is a fluidized bed of particles that goes across to about this elevation. You can see the heater bundles in here. Um, I'm not showing all the particles because it would be a little complex to see. Uh, I'm only showing the feed particles that have come in. And so what you see is the evolution of the biomass content, the char, 
Um, here you see the drying, they come in moist, so moisture has to release before the, the, the rest of the kinetics often take off. And then we see the impact on the gas phase species, everything hydrogen, I'm showing CO, CO2, and methane here. Uh, there's a more complex model. So this is at the pilot unit. Uh, at the pilot unit, you don't have a lot of uh, scale-up issues, although you do see some uh, asymmetry that was uh, looked at, studied, addressed. Moving to commercial, you have a completely different beast, a much larger unit. So here is, uh, on the right, I'm showing the hydrodynamics bubbling, deep bubbling bed behavior uh, on a commercial scale unit. Uh, commercial simulations were performed at a variety of feedstocks. Uh, one unit processes black liquor, which is a, a byproduct of the pulp and paper industry. Uh, simulations have been done at uh, using forest residuals, biomass, and municipal solid waste. And the most recent scales are at 500, 1,000, and 2,000 dry tons per day. Looking at not just the hydrodynamics of the scale up, but but really even predictive on the on the syn gas composition, the outlet gas composition. So wrapping this up, uh, that's the process we went through. Where are we today? Uh, the, the most recent iteration of this is Project Sierra. This is uh, run by, uh, owned by Fulcrum Bioenergy. Uh, this plant just outside of Reno, Nevada. Um, and this one is a, a very sustainable project. It takes municipal solid waste, basically processed trash, um, and makes jet fuel. Uh, it's, it's being commissioned now. Uh, the sustainability is part of the close integration, both upstream and downstream, of, of not just of the technology we're showing here, but the overall project. Close proximity to one of the largest landfills in the United States. And then supply chain logistics, upstream you know, with waste management, downstream, Marathon Petroleum, a number of airlines, and even the, uh, the US Navy and Air Force uh, for the fuels being produced. And, and maybe I'll just pause there for just a second. As engineers, we get lost in the details, but we're taking trash and making jet fuel. Jet fuel. This is pretty cool. Um, and then lastly, you know, this is an ongoing process, ongoing digital transformation. So this is a snapshot uh, of where we are today, with current iterations of the project. Um, the software and technology are, are continuing to improve. We're now going through testing on um, new technology, taking advantage of the latest uh, NVIDIA uh, capabilities, and we're projecting our next software release next year to have uh, probably about a 300 times speed up since when we uh, first started working together. Um, we're also moving to more of an automation focus. So uh, AI, big data, machine learning, these are all buzzwords, but they're, they're coming together and enabled by the speed and they enabled by uh, the partnerships to really move toward real-time process control, uh, not just better understanding the process, but controlling them. And this wouldn't be problem. A par this wouldn't be possible without our, our global collaboration and partnerships, not just between us and TRI and the customers and the supply chain, but technology partners, uh, Nvidia. Uh, our customers are able to run on AWS, take advantage of the latest uh, computational capability immediately. So that's the, the quick overview of our entry. And with that, I'll turn it over to questions. Okay, thank you very much, Peter. So once again, we pause for questions. If you have one, please type it into the questions box. And I'll give you a moment on that. Don't forget the winner of this award will automatically qualify as a finalist for our top prize, the Outstanding Achievement in Chemical and Process Engineering Award. Why not join us for that webinar too later this month? You can register at icomeorg forward slash global awards. So we have our first question. What is the prime value driver, circular economy or digitalization? I would say the circular economy. And so I'm going to open this up. Uh, and if Ravi, if you want to answer any differently, uh, but you know, digitalization is a tool in the process. I know this is a digitalization award and we should be talking about the digitalization aspect, but really that's a tool toward the end goal. You know, enabling, you know, this is iChemE, right? We're chemical engineers, um, and but the goal is to to impact society and, and our planet uh, in, a, in a green and sustainable way for our, our future children and future generations. And really that's what, this project's about, and I would say that the digitalization is a way to get there faster and more efficiently. 
Robbie, do you have anything to add or? Yeah, or I, concur with, I concur with you, Peter. Yeah, the main goal is uh, sustainability and circular economy. So we are trying to make essentially it's all driven by climate change events and decarbonization. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, just the one question there, so we'll move on. Thank you very much for that presentation. So we've reached that point that everybody's been waiting for. It's time to reveal the winner. So before we do that, let me thank all of our presenters today uh, for sharing more details about their work. I'm sure you'll agree, some really uh, encouraging, very different projects on show. So we'll start with our highly commended entries, and they are from Saudi Aramco, and the joint entry from CPFD Software and Thermochem Recovery International. So well done to everyone associated with those entries.